Good afternoon. I'm Daniel Guest, and welcome to the Imagine Golf Podcast brought to you by Imagine Golf and PXG. You can go to our site, imaginegolf.com, see all of our offerings, including our free drills, our practice plans, our golf ebooks and videos, or to book a lesson with me at our state of the art studio right outside of Philadelphia or virtually through our partner, golfliveapp.com. You could sign up for our free tips and videos that go out once a week, every week by simply dropping us your email. All right. So it's been a couple of weeks. Um, been really crazy, crazy busy here with instructions. So sorry about that. But um, here we are. I uh, wanted to talk to you about a subject today that comes up. Um, I seem to say that all the time, <laughs> but comes up a lot um, when people ask me, hey, Daniel, what, what's a good book to read on golf? Right. And that's a great question. Right. Because there are hundreds of thousands of books on golf. I mean, literally. Um, and I think you got to be careful, you know, because, um, depending on where you're at in your golf stage, uh, life cycle, I should say, depending on where your swings at, depending how committed you are, um, you got to make sure that you're reading the appropriate books for, for where you're at. So I tried to come up today with a, a top 10 list, if you would, of just some great books that anybody can read. I mean, anybody can read and then gain something from them. Um, the majority of them can also be found audio as well. So um, there's some of these uh, on audio, I should say. There's some of these books that I highly recommend that you actually get the book um, because there's great pictures and great diagrams and, and the like. But um, audio books are, are also very valuable. I tend to um, gravitate towards them as I get older as well. But I'm in my office today and I'm staring at a wall full of like, I don't know, I, I think I counted them a year ago, but over 250 some books. Um, on the topic of golf, and, uh, and I've read them all, man. So um, it's uh, it's not an easy list to come up with. I'm sure I'm going to miss some, um, and I'm sure I'll get some feedback. Oh, you forgot this. How in the world could you forget that? You know, that's not the top 10. This is my top 10, all right? And I also broke the top 10 down into golf instruction and the mental game because they're two different things. But by and large, these are the top 10 positive books on, on golf in general. So um, it wouldn't be a list at all. Um, if I didn't start with Ben Hogan, right? The five lessons or five modern fundamentals of golf. Look, th this, this is a book that was written over 50 plus years ago. Um, we recommend it to all of our students. So everyone at Imagine Golf that takes a lesson with us, uh, we recommend in our lesson recap that they read this book. We actually give them a link to it. Um, and for certain lesson plans, we actually uh, send it for free. That's, that's how valuable this book is, not only to the golfer, but it makes our life as instructors um, really, really um, much, I should say, much, much easier. Um, I, I think you could argue that it's really not um, beginner friendly, right? And that it can be a little bit overwhelming. But at the end of the day, if you read it in chunks, chapter by chapter, uh, with a little bit of space in between, and then uh, and then try and practice what he advocates, if you would, uh, you're going to find it's phenomenally effective. Um, two caveats to this book here. Number one, he talks about ball position, right, and about moving the ball for every single club. Well, if you're a double-digit handicapper, um, we don't recommend that at Imagine Golf. We recommend that you keep the ball um, in the center of your stance primarily for every club with the exception of your longer irons, woods, hybrids, and driver. But for everything else, let's keep it in the middle until you finally get a little bit better and then we start moving the ball appropriately. And then the other caveat with the Ben Hogan book is uh, he talks about the importance of the right elbow being dug into the rib cage. Um, I, I don't, I think with modern, with modern equipment and data and track man and all these launch monitors, we realize that while that looks good and was a caveat for probably 200 plus years in golf instruction, um, it's not required, right? You, many, many, many students have their right elbow or their back elbow up. Um, and many professional golfers today, um, have it up out of their rib cage and absolutely crush the ball. So just those two caveats, but the book is phenomenal. The pictures are phenomenal. Um, the diagram, the analogies, everything about it is just phenomenal. So that's, that's our number one book, um, The Five Lessons, The Modern Fundamentals of Golf. Arguably, it's um, one of the top books in golf. It probably is. I should have looked that up, but I think it's a top-selling golf book in, in history in all time. All right. Uh, number two on my list is Golf My Way by Jack Nicholas. Uh, it, it's one of my f favorite books, um, not only because he's a, a Ohio State Buckeye, where my son went to school and I'm still uh, paying for it, <laughs> but he also talks about um, a lot of golf, if you would, a lot of wisdom and strategy that um, – so it's not just a teaching book. It's actually kind of like you – know, I don't want to say a biography, but it's, it's pretty good, man. Uh, it's a great book 
um, to kind of like soak up everything that that he had to say in his career. He's a very um, open and candid kind of guy. I actually met him at the end of his career uh, when I li- used to live in Florida. But just a, a great book, um, and I highly, highly recommend it. Probably, def- like I said, one of my absolute favorites. Um, I, I wouldn't consider his swing uh, as as something that you should copy um, because it's it's definitely unique, right? It reminds me of almost like a Raymond Floyd or a Bubba Bubba Watson swing, not necessarily in its form and function, but definitely in its uniqueness. So that, I don't think that's something that we should strive for. That uh, crazy kind of unique backswing, if you would. But I think it's a great blend of golf wisdom, strategy, uh, and instruction. And it's definitely um, a must read, which is why it's number two on our list. Um, and this is number three. Uh, and, and I arguably almost put this in number two, and then I, I, I couldn't do it. It's uh, How I Play Golf by Tiger Woods. Um, if you've never read anything by Tiger Woods, you absolutely got to got to read this. Um, he, he wrote another book called golf my way. Um, and there's a lot of good stuff in that, but this, this is just, I think a, a better overall book. Uh, it talks about fundamentals. It talks about the, the mental game court and course management, um, why tiger plays like he does and how he plays like he does. Um, but I definitely would, when we, I mentioned earlier in the, uh, in the opening, if you would, about buying, um, an actual book or a physical copy. This is one of those um, because it has, again, tons of pictures. Um, it's extremely beginner friendly um, and has a lot of nuggets, if you would, all the way to the expert caliber or scratch golfer, if you would. So there's really something for everybody in this book. Um, I think it's one of the most approachable, if you would, introductions into the game um, out there. And it also comes, like I said, with some advanced strategies all throughout the book for for our better players. So How I Play Golf by Tiger Woods is our number three. Number four, The Golfing Machine. Um, While I, look, this is, um, I I always affectionately call people that are really analytical propeller heads. This is that propeller head type of uh, golf book, if you would. So it it made my top 10 list because while I'm not a huge fan of getting super, super detailed and analytical in a golf swing, there's so many good things in this book. and I actually, I, I studied this book. I, I didn't just read this book. And I, that's a caveat to this book, right? It's not for the faint of heart. Um, this is a book that you study. Um, it, it really gets down to the understanding of a golf swing. Um, the concepts uh, of the book are absolutely um, foundational. Um, and you see them, you know, if you watch any of the golf channel today uh, and see any of the pros on there, um, Given you know their instruction and talking about hey how they do what they do, um, you're gonna you're gonna see that exact same content in the golfing machine. Um, it's a little bit older as well. Um, Homer Kelly is the author, uh, but it's just a phenomenal book. It, again, it is a little bit of tough read. Uh, it's dry like an encyclopedia, but um, it's definitely one of the most influential books um, that I don't want to say the golf world has ever seen, but definitely the golf instruction wor- uh, instructional world. Um, has seen because it really lays out. There's nothing you cannot find in this book. It's you know I, I'm surprised he didn't call it the golfing Bible, if you would. That's that's how good this book is. Um, but yeah, just take it with a grain of salt, right? Much like the Ben Hogan book, um, read it in chapters, right? Don't just sit down there and try to read it um, all in one sitting because it'll blow your mind, if you would. So those are our top four, my top four on uh, the instructional piece, if you would. Um, I'm going to give you six more, if you would, on the mental game, right? Um, And I purposely did six on the mental and four on instruction, because on physical, if you would, instruction, because we all know that the mental piece is absolutely critical um, to playing better golf, right? We're not playing golf swing. We're playing golf, right? So the game of golf is crazy, crazy mental. The the most mental game that I've ever imagined playing in my life. And and I played some pretty high-level sports in my day. So... um, but look, um, if you're going to try to break 90, if you're going to try to break 80 and then even get down to 70, um, you've got to know some of these tactics and some of these things in these books that I'm about to go over, right? You just can't go, I'm just pure physical ability, right? If you could, everybody would be better. So um, the number one on our list for the best golf mental game books um, is golf is not a game of perfect. It's an excellent, I'll, I'll read it again. Golf is not a game of perfect. It's just an excellent book by Bob Rotella. Um, and absolutely a classic. It um, it has a unique way of shifting your entire perspective of the game um, through little anecdotes, 
um, from some of the best players in the world that he's worked with um, through his own experience. Um, I, I, I can tell you that um, I, I, there's not one thing in the book that absolutely, like I say, hey, man, that absolutely helped my game. But I can also tell you this. My scores went down after I read it. Um, I lived in Florida at the time when I first read this book. I've read it three times now in my career. Um, and it seems like I always go back to it when I'm having some mental challenges, if you would. But um, like I said, th- this book absolutely will help you drop scores. And I think even bigger than that, um, for a lot of you out there, it'll help you uh, enjoy the game a little bit more, right? It's a crazy, challenging game, but um, you got to enjoy it. Uh, you don't have to enjoy it. If you don't want to enjoy it, don't enjoy it. But you get the point, right? It'd be better if you enjoyed it. Um, and I think it's... Um, uh, I've given this book actually to a lot of students and I've given it to a lot of friends and relatives as well. That's how much I, I like this book. Um, what else about it? Oh my God, it gets m- massive reviews. I think it has like 7,500 reviews, positive reviews. So that's unheard of for a golf book these days. So anyway, um, golf is not a game of perfect is our number one by Bob Rotella. Number two is every shot must have a purpose. Um, This book was written by Lynn and Pia. Um, These two women were Anna Kasoristan's mental game coaches. Uh, They also had other uh, golf uh, professionals as well, but Annika was one of their most favorite, uh, not favorite, famous, I should say, probably favorite. (laughs) Um, A little bit about Annika, if you don't know, she was the only woman ever to shoot 59 on the LPGA Tour, all right? And the entire premise of this book is that every golfer should try to shoot 54, all right, i.e. a perfect round, right? Meaning you birdie every single solitary hole. So um, I, I don't think that 54 is realistic for any golfer. Um, the mindset required to even like thinking about such a shoot, uh, such a um, shooting such a low score um, can definitely, you know, get get in someone's head. But I do think that if you had the mindset, like if, if you could get the mindset, um, well, let's back up. When I say that, physically, I should say, it's almost impossible to shoot a 54, right? You're going to make mistakes. But the mental piece, right? The mental piece would uh, that would be required to make that happen, um, you can do that. You can at least emulate some of that. And this book talks about how to do that. It is a little analytical, um, but if you like to practice and you're dedicated to improving your game and your mental um, prowess, if you would, um, this book is definitely a must read. Um, Every Shot Must Have a Purpose. It's by Pia Nielsen and Lynn Marriott. Um, and it presents that perspective that's uh, starkly different than many other the mental game books, which is, which is why I had it on it. It's a fun book to read. And instead of trying to avoid um, perfection, they embrace the mentality that what they call Vision 54. And if you're serious about the game, um, I think you definitely must read this. And I think you'll like it. You'll probably end up giving it to a few of your friends um, that, uh, have mental challenges out there on the course. All right. Anyway, number three, uh, this is one of my favorites. Um, don't choke, right. A champion's guide to winning under pressure by Gary player. Um, this is, this is a highly, highly underrated instructional book. Um, I think more people see it as, um, uh, an autobiography on Gary player's, um, career, but, uh, I, I don't see it as such. I see it. It gives you kind of like a behind the scenes look at what um, a tour player as good as him thinks about leading up to during and even after winning um, not only tournaments, he won a ton of tournaments, but a ton of major championships too. So um, you won't get a lot of statistical and tactical tips um, from the book, but you'll learn how to compete. Um, and he's definitely one of the best in the game at that. So um, don't choke. A uh, Champion's Guide to Winning Under Pressure by Gary Player. Um, highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, and I think you'll like it. Um, this is one of those books that you can sit down at the beach over a weekend and read it the entire, uh, all the way through, I should say. It, it's that good. It's that captivating. And again, I've actually given this book out a lot as well. People definitely love it. Number four on our mental list of, of the best games is The Inner Game of Golf. This book is full of definitely actionable strategies for uh, lowering someone's scores. Um, for years, I've used several of the top tips in this. Um, I've reread this many, many times, um, especially when I'm going into some type of competition, um, whether it's be uh, you know uh, the club championship or a member guest that I'm playing um, or just anything. But it's by um, Timothy Galloway. 
um, uh, Galvi, I should say, or Galvi. Um, I can't for, for, can't remember exactly how to say his last name, but it's the inner game of golf. Um, Timothy Galway, um, definitely one of, like I said, the most actionable. Um, provides all sorts of great strategies um, for taming your mind um, on the course, unleashing your natural ability uh, to shoot lower scores. And it's again, it's just a, a, a great, great read. Um, for all you out there that are type A like myself or very competitive like myself, it has a lot of these types of strategies um, that you'll be able to employ right away on the course here. Um, number five, Harvey Penick's Little Red Book. Um, and I know a lot of people will say, um, hey, how, can, how in the world can this be number five? And it should be number one or two. But um, his Little Red Book, Lessons in Teaching from a Lifetime of Golf, um, little, just tiny bite-sized stories from his teaching days. Um, he's one of the forefathers of golf instruction, uh, definitely in the hall of fame. I put him, put him up there as top, top five as one of the best golf instructors of all time. Um, he was a golf, uh, uh, coach and instructor, just so you know, at the university of Texas from, I think it was like 1931 to 1963, um, and coached, you know, great players you know, during his run there, like Tom Kite, Ben Crenshaw, just to name a few. Um, the book is full of wisdom. And again, it's one of those books that is definitely um, has something to offer for everyone. There's no one um, that doesn't get something from this book. Um, and what's cool about this book is you can, since it's little little bite-sized uh, pieces, if you would, you can read it, put it down, read it, put it down. And it's not like you, you have to go back and reread a section here. Um, so for you, those of you that have uh, ADHD like I do and, and sometimes can't get through a whole chapter, much less a whole book, um, this is your book, man. Uh, Little Red Book by Harvey Pennick, man. You definitely can't go wrong with this, Jim. Um, the last one on the list, Zen Golf. All right. Zen Golf. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, you know, uh, sounds a little esoteric to me. It's by Dr. Joseph Parent or Parent, depending on how you say it. But he um, he's definitely talks to you about um calming the mind in other words you know getting within yourself so that you can perform at your maximum level um, mindfulness meditation um, can be one of the best effective ways to do simply just that um, look I, I started this book um, and daily practice a while ago um, with this and, and kind of fell out of it and I've come back to it again at different times uh, of my career um, I definitely re recommend this golf to to my students that I know, um, have challenges on the golf course and have challenges keeping their emotions in check, right? Especially after bad shots. Um, this Zen golf book provides um, kind of a, a gentle, if you would, introduction to mindfulness and how you can apply it to golf. Um, and if you're looking for a way to like kind of lower your scores and get more enjoyment out of just rounds, um, this is a great place to start, right? You're, and we're not talking about any any physical change in your golf swing or anything. It's all just um, changes in, in how you approach things, especially, uh, after uh, a poor shot. And by the way, you're going to hit a bunch of poor shots in your career moving forward. Everyone does. Um, so again, I just, I highly, highly recommend this book. Um, and, um, I think that's our top 10 list, right? So there it is. Top 10 list, uh, of the best golf books, um, available today, 2023. Um, most of them have been around for a while. Um, a couple of them are 50 plus years old. So I've stood the test of time. I highly recommend that you get them all. Um, don't run to the shop right now or to the bookstore or to Audible or whatever, wherever you get your books and buy them all now because you'll never get, get through them all. But I definitely recommend that you get these books and that you read them at some point in time in your career. Um, and there's no ne not necessarily any order, although I rank them um, in my top 10 list. There's definitely no, no uh, order, if you would, to how you should read them. So pick one that that, uh, that you think would motivate you, pick one that is applicable to what you got going on today in your golf swing. Pick one that has always been a challenge of yours, right? If you always struggle with the mental piece, you're always, you know, you're, you're the guy that, you know, can't get past a bad shot and because of that, you hit two or three extra bad shots. Um, you're a club thrower, you know, you're a cursor, whatever, right. Um, then I highly recommend Zen golf and, uh, you know, you get the idea. So, but all right. That's today's podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, please hit the follow button wherever you get your podcast. Be sure to check out our site, imaginegolf.com. And you can follow us on all the social media platforms. Um, we're on every single one of them. 
Um, and here's to getting you the game that you've always imagined. 